our scripture this morning will come from the book of Psalms. And it'll be the 122nd Psalm. If you want to go ahead and, and turn there. One of the things that uh, we've been talking about lately and over the past couple of years is about the church. And we've uh, made the statement that uh, some people just really don't think that the church is relevant anymore. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it kind of encourages me and discourages me when you uh, pass by a church. And uh, we pass by uh, about three churches on the way here that, uh, that over the years have declined. There's not, uh, not very many people going to that church. Anymore. One and two, two cars is what you see parked there. But then I was encouraged the other day. We were driving... Uh, in Murfreesboro on Thompson Lane. And uh, how many know where New Vision Baptist Church is? Uh, New Vision is just on Thompson Lane, right by the, uh, by the park, uh, Stone River Battleground Park. And uh, as we drove by, I saw a, a sign of encouragement in that, in that church. And it said this, overflow parking, or off-campus overflow parking, at Middle Tennessee uh, Medical Center, or it's the no, it's Middle Tennessee Medical Center. It's the it's not the hospital, but the uh, clinic, medical clinic, overflow parking, uh, off-campus overflow parking at Middle Tennessee Medical Clinic, and I, that's kind of encouraging. Now I know that church has spent a lot of money as they have. have uh, Grown the size of, of their uh, of their uh, camp, and I'll call it campus. I don't know that that's what they call the church's property now. It's a campus. Uh, it's like I, mean, I think they're going to college or something. But uh, they spent a lot of money, and they, and they have a lot of parking there. It's amazing how much parking uh, that they do have around that building. But uh, evidently, uh, business is good. People are going to church. People are taking the uh, the church uh, seriously. And they have to worry about where they're going to depart the, the people. And uh, what I would like to I'd like to speak to you about this morning is why do we go to church? Why are you here this morning? Is it because somebody made you come? Is it because uh, uh, you want to be uh, be seen in your fine outfit? You know, uh, I dress up every every Sunday. I hope you like it. But, uh, I, uh, nobody ever compliments me too much on it. But, but at least nobody's ever told me you mismatched the coat and the, and the tie or, or something like that. But why do we come to church? And we're going to look at that for, for just a moment. One reason, that, and I, I'm not going to bring this out in the message, but one reason that we should come to church is to honor God, to honor Jesus Christ. In fact, Jesus said that the church is his bride. And if it's that important uh, to Christ, if it's that important to God, then we too should honor that. If you found Psalms 122, we're going to start reading at verse 1 and go through the entire psalm and the end at verse 9. And if you would stand with me as we read God's Word. Here. The psalmist writes, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For thrones are set there for judgment and thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be with, uh, within uh, your walls, prosperity within your places. For the sake of my brethren and compan companions, I will now say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will see your good. Let's pray. Father, we come again into your presence in prayer to thank you for uh, blessings that you have given us so far this day and this past week and Heavenly Father we're just looking forward to the things that you're going to pour out upon us as we venture into a new week in your service. We pray
pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless the reading of your word this morning. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would take through the word that is going to be uh, uh, presented here, the scriptures that are presented here, and just uh, uh, burn in our hearts and, and give us the courage to, to step out on faith in your service. Father, I pray if there's someone here that doesn't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, that right now the Holy Spirit is working in their life. And Heavenly Father, that they will say yes to Jesus. Father, bless us now as we continue in our worship. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Why do people attend church on Sunday? Well, for most of us, it's not because we're forced to. Uh, we, uh, we live in a, in a free country, and, and so attendance is optional. Now, my two kids probably thought that they, they were forced to, and they were if we were going to church, and we went to church, it's kind of hard for the, for the preacher not to go to church, but when we went to church, they went with us. And they went with us until they got old enough uh, to, uh, to drive and to, uh, uh, to do the things that, uh, you know, that, that they wanted to do. But they, even when they were in that situation, they still went to church. And I think it behooves God's... The, parents of children who, who know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior to literally make their children go to church. It shouldn't be an option. When they're little, they belong to you. You set the stage. It shouldn't be an option. You need to tell them, you're going to church. And some people might argue, well, if I make them go, go to church, that, uh, uh, that they will hate church. Well, I'm of the opinion that we need to let Jesus worry about that. We need to bring them in and, and, and have them in God's house. Now, we need to get a lot of our, our older folks there, too. You know, sending a, a child to church it doesn't help much when the parents do it, uh, but it's better than that. But when you have the opportunity as, as parents to, to bring your children to church, load them up on Sunday morning and bring them to church. And some people would also argue, well, that's no guarantee. No, there's no guarantees at all. But the one thing that, that the Bible tells us that we need to do is bring up our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And if we bring them up in, in, that, in that nurture and admonition, then what is going to happen? God is going to take over from there. He'll work a, he'll work a miracle. He will deal with it from there. But most of us sitting here this morning weren't forced to be here. We, uh, we came because we wanted to. Some people might say, well, I, uh, do we come for amusement? Folks, it, we don't come to church for amusement. In fact, the world has, has the church beat uh, in, a, in a, a very, very big way when it comes to entertainment. There are more things out there to entertain you than, uh, uh, than, than you can shake a stick at. So if, you come, if you're coming to church to be entertained, I don't think that you're going to make the, make the progress. We, we will never make it to the Emmys or the Oscars or, or any of those, uh, those uh, things. The, the church just won't make it there because we're not in the entertainment business. So you can't really say that people come because they are entertained. I want you to understand something this morning as we move along is that Jesus Christ went to church. In fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus attended the synagogue regularly. If you can flip real quick to Luke chapter 4, verse 10, uh, 4, or 16, it says this. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Jesus went to church. Now, look at that verse of Scripture. Let's, let's kind of dissect it a little bit. Uh, Jesus was brought up in Nazareth and was, and as his custom was. What does that kind of lead you to believe? That, that, it, that mom and daddy carried him to, to the synagogue, didn't he? It, it, was, it, it, was, it was something that wasn't an option for him. It wasn't an option for them. And uh, it was his custom to be in church on Sunday. It's, a, it's your custom. A lot of you have the custom of being in, in church on Sunday and Sunday night and, and Wednesday night. 
And it, it becomes something that just becomes part of you. And the Bible goes on to say that he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and he stood up as others did to read. Jesus took part. Folks, there's a, 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 a lesson in, in the, this verse of Scripture by itself is that we need to come to church just as Jesus did and we need to take part just as Jesus did. Church is really not a spectator sport. I know you have to sit there and you have to listen to, to me, you have to listen to your Sunday school teacher, you have to, have to listen to the music, but church is not a spectator sport. In your classes, you get an opportunity to, to voice your opinion. In the, the music, you get an opportunity to sing. In the, in the worship service, you get an opportunity to complain when you leave because I've said something that you didn't like. But that's, uh, that's just part of it. And I want you to understand something that Jesus thought it was important. And if the Son of God thought it was important to be in church and be there and take part, why in the world can't God's people understand how important it is to be gathered together on the Lord's Day and take part in His service? Folks, Jesus was brought up going to church, and He didn't wait to see if it would rain or if He had a headache before He decided whether or not He would attend. Uh, our youngest son, Scott, would, would usually go to school. And, you know, I always took every opportunity to, to miss school that I could. But uh, Scott, Scott had a different attitude. He said, I can be uh, sick at school or I can be sick at home. It's not going to matter where I'm sick at. Now, in today's society, if you've got the flu, I wish you would stay at home to you better. You know, you don't want to spread that around. Uh, but... If, 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 you've got, if you've got something that's minor, you need to uh, get, get with the program and, and come on in. And I'm always reminded, when I, when I think about, about this, I'm always reminded of that, that lady at, uh, uh, at Mount Zion Baptist Church that would, that would be there every Sunday. Her, 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 t her, her goal was if she could get one foot on the ground, on the, out of the bed, she would be at church there on Sunday. And folks, I think that's a good goal for every one of us. Jesus was, didn't wait to see if it was raining. He didn't wait to see if he had a headache. He was committed to being in, in church. He was committed to being in that synagogue. And I'm sure that as Jesus was in the synagogue, he, like, like a lot of you, certainly didn't agree with everything the speaker had to say. And probably many services were boring, but he found his way to God's house. I understand that you're not going to agree with me 100% of the time, and you shouldn't, because I'm going to say some things that might not be exactly biblically true. And if you, have, you can take issue with those. You have, you have a responsibility to take issue with those things. And you might not like everything that I say. You might not, uh, uh, might not think that the, 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 the service is interesting, that it, that it is boring. I know most of, uh, most of the young people and a lot of the adults think that church service is boring. And that's the reason a lot of our, our churches are, are endeavoring to make it a little bit more, uh, and I hate to use the word entertaining, but that's what, we're trying, what they're trying to do, is make it a little more entertaining so that you, you, can, you won't feel that it's boring. But let me say this to you this morning. The most boring service in the world has something that you can take home with you. I don't care how boring the, the speaker is. I don't care how, how boring the service is. There's always a, a glimmer that you can take away if you are, are here for the right reason. If you are here to worship and serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus went to church when it was boring. Jesus went to church when he didn't agree with the, the priests that were, were making the speeches in the synagogue. But he went found his way to God's house. So, if you and I are finding our way to God's house, we're not following the example of our Lord because we're not attending regularly. So, here are some reasons for going to church. And if you want to jot them down, you're free to do so. First of all, and most important of all, we go to church to worship God. Let me just be very blunt with you this morning. Coming to church is not about you. It's not about your needs. It's not about your wants. It's not about your troubles. 
It's not about your sorrows. Coming to church is worshiping God. And when we finally figure that out, and we finally come and we worship God in, in spirit and in truth, guess what happens? God reaches out and takes care of those needs and wants and problems and, and situations. But we don't come to church because of our needs and our wants. We come to church to worship. In the heart of each of us is a need for God. There is a place that, that that's a, there is a hole in, in our in our soul that, that has a, a need for God, and in the and the, we have a capacity to worship God. Some people say that God can be worshipped anywhere. Um, some of, I've heard people say, "I can worship God outdoors." I can in the in the fields, out in the, in the deer stand, on the lake, on the golf course. How many remember President Theodore Roosevelt? I, some of you are shaking your head. I know y'all can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but President Roosevelt had an answer to this classic excuse. And that's what it is, an excuse. He says, you can, but you likely won't. You can, but you likely won't. You know, it, it's easy to say I can do something somewhere else, especially worship, but it becomes hard to do. You won't do it. You'll make that excuse, but you won't do it. We come together this morning to worship God. <clears throat> Folks, worship involves other people. The Bible tells us where two or three are gathered in, in the Lord's name, He promises to be in the midst. If two or three are gathered together. Now some, some people use that too as, a, as an opportunity to say, well, I don't need to come to church. They say there's two or three people at home. Well, again, remember what President Roosevelt said? You can, but you likely won't. But here's the thing about this verse of Scripture. This is the start. Where two or three are gathered together, I'll be in the midst. And if God is in the midst, and this is a church starting, then guess what? It doesn't stay two or three people very long. <coughs> and multiplies. And increases. It doesn't stay two or three very long. God, if God is in that worship, God sees that it, it blossoms in the mold. We are here to worship. We are also we also come to church to experience forgiveness. Anybody need forgiveness? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Here's one thing that I I, I saw a little 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 something little word that someone once said. It said this: the church is for sinners. You cannot be received into the church unless you confess that you are a sinner saved by grace. The church isn't for saints. It's not for the good people. It's for the sinners. We come together to experience forgiveness. Again, don't raise your hand. But how many of you have sinned this week? With that, with that smile on your face, I know that you did. <laughs> we all do. We all sin. It's a fact of life. We have sin that enters our life. And churches are for sinners. Some people say, that, well, I, I don't go to, that, go to church because it's full of hypocrites. It should be. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. The one thing that sets a lot of us apart from, from being just a sinner is that we're saved by grace. Our soul has been changed. Our life has been changed by the blood of Jesus. 
But it doesn't take away the fact that we are sinners. In need, we were sinners in need of forgiveness. Sinners in need of a Savior. So church is for sinners. If you're not a sinner, you can go home. You don't, you don't need to be here. But if you are a sinner, you need to be in God's house because that's where you feel the forgiveness. Worship involves confessions. When we confess our sins, we experience the forgiveness of God. You know, one thing that, that's missing from church services much anymore is the fact that, that people don't, don't confess that they have anything wrong in their life. We don't want people to know that, that we're bad. We don't want people to know that we, we've done this or done that. We don't want to come up and, and, and let the, the people of God know. I'm being embarrassed. Well, how much more are you going to be embarrassed if you're standing before God trying to explain it and standing before God's people? You know, when we come together to worship and we come together for forgiveness, God's people should be supportive of those who come and confess those sins. And a lot of times we fall down on that situation, that, that part. We're not supportive of those people who confess their sins. Folks, if God is, is willing to, to forgive and if God is willing to, to put them aside, we should be willing to put them aside as well. When people come before God's people in a worship service and ask the church for forgiveness. We should forgive. God forgives. Just remember, we are all sinners saved by grace. And in church, we find a place where it's possible to forgive ourselves and to forgive others. When we come together to worship, when our hearts are in a worshipful attitude, it's easy to forgive ourselves. You remember we talked a little bit about that first? Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves. Sometimes that's the hardest thing in the world to do is to forgive ourselves. But we, have to, we can forgive ourselves and we can forgive others. We shouldn't carry around that badge of unforgiveness. We go to church to find Christian fellowship. We could probably mark that out and say we go to church to find something to eat. <laughs> but let me let me remind you, it's not the job of the church to furnish fellowship. It's not the job of the church to furnish fellowship. It is the mission of the church to be a fellowship. Where we come together, one with another. A place where we can bear one another's burdens. A place where we can pray for one another and love one another. The church shouldn't tear down anyone. It should build them up. It should build them up. Jesus built up his people, did he? He builds us up today through the Holy Spirit. So why do we tear other people down? I can remember a couple of instances that happened to a, a leader in the, in the Southern Baptist Convention in a church where sin was, was uh, spoken about. About one of their family. And that church took the wrong step. There wasn't any forgiveness there. They ostracized that, that family. Pushed them out. This withdrew fellowship from them. They could even the family who was was dealing with the the sin of, of, of one of their their own couldn't come to to the God's people and, and ask them to pray with them and ask them to uh, 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 to bear him, bear the burdens that they were burdened they burdened with. 
Folks, my burden should be your burdens, and your burden should be my burdens. If we are truly a church in here to worship God, we're all in this together. If I'm hurting, you're hurting. If you're hurting, I'm hurting. We're all in this together because we are not here to fellowship. And when you when we think about fellowship, we think about eating. That's the first. Isn't that, isn't that true? That's the first thing we think about. You say fellowship, it's food. But that's not what fellowship is. Fellowship is, is drawing close to one another where we can bear one another's burdens and, and pray for one another and love. Folks, you just can't find that kind of situation at home or in the woods. The last thing, we go to church to be a part of God's great movement. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and Him only shall I serve. Folks, we enter this building to worship. And our minds should be instructed, our hearts should be inspired, our souls should be fed, and we should be motivated to go out. There's a lot of talk about missions now. There's a movement in the TBC to help churches that are faltering and to plant new churches. And we do that under the name of missions. Folks, let me remind you that God's great movement is missions. Every single one of us in this room today that knows Jesus Christ as our personal Savior is a missionary. We may never go overseas. We may never be commissioned by the mission board, North American or, or international, either one. But we are missionaries just the same. Our mission field is where we work, where we go to school, where we shop. And we need to be telling people that we come in contact with about Jesus. That's God's need. Remember the Great Commission was it? Going to all the world and do what? Take the gospel of all the world. And sometimes we miss the whole point. We look in Africa, we look in Asia, we look in Europe, we look down under, but we never look in our back. There's a multitude of mission courses out there. And you know what? All you need to do is be a witness each day. You come to church, you're inspired by God's Word, you're instructed, your heart's inspired, your soul is fed, and, our, and we're motivated to move out and to tell people about Jesus. And folks, you don't have to grab them by the collar. You don't have to grab them by the arm and say, let, let me talk to you about Jesus. You can if you want to. You can if, if you have that personality. Some people can get away with that. You know, some people, some people have that ability to just walk up to somebody and grab them and start just, just rattling off everything that they ever needed to know about, about God, about salvation, about Jesus Christ, and they never get hit. But it doesn't have to be something that external. 
It can be something as simple as being nice to someone that opens up an opportunity for you to say something about your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But in order for that to happen, we need to, we need to be a part of God's church and we need to be a part of God's movement. And when we enter the worship, we are, our batteries are recharged. And then when we, our batteries are, re, are recharged, we leave this place to go out into the world as missionaries for God. <laughs> Folks, it's not, just, it's not enough just to meet and to talk and to sing and to listen and to fellowship. The church's goal is to make disciples and grow mature Christians and they'll change the world. They'll change the world. But it all starts about why you're here. Are you here just to occupy a seat? Or are you here to worship God, experience forgiveness, bask in Christian fellowship, be a part of God's great movement. Your part is not my part. I don't have the same responsibilities that you have that God has given you. You don't have the responsibilities that God has given me. You don't have my talents. I don't have your That's why we are the church. I can speak to someone that you can't speak to. You can speak to someone that I can't speak to. That's why we're the church. When I need help, you're there to help me and I'm there to help you. When you need prayer, I'm there to pray for you. You're there to pray for me. God calls us to this place to worship. God calls us to this place to be energized. God calls us to this place to find forgiveness. God calls us to this place to find mercy. And then God calls us to walk out those doors and be a missionary. God speaks to each one of us in a different way. God speaking to you this morning. If he is, you need to listen. You need to respond. You need to be like Jesus who went to the synagogue every day, every Sabbath, and stood up and read. And when Jesus was through reading, when he was through worshiping, he stepped out into the world and brought men and women and boys and girls into the fold of God. Why are we here to worship this morning? We're here to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, help us to understand the true meaning of worship. Help us to understand that when we come together as your people, we draw strength not only from you, but from the people around us. We draw strength from people praying for us. We share strength with people we pray for. Father, I pray this morning that right now you are working in our hearts and in our lives. And that Heavenly Father, if you're calling us to repentance this morning, we're listening. If you're calling us to rededication, we're listening. If you're calling us into special service, we're listening. 
We're also listening, Heavenly Father, when you call us just to be who we are. To use our talents and our abilities in your service. Heavenly Father, I pray today that we'll understand how important it is to worship together. To draw strength from each other. And to step out on faith that you will carry us through any situation. Father, I pray this morning that if there's someone here that doesn't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, they come at this time with that realization that they need Him as their personal Savior. And as they bow their head in prayer right now and just ask Jesus to be a part of their life and cover their sins, that you'll give them the courage to walk down the side and share it with your church. Father, I also pray that there's here someone else here that needs, needs to make a decision this morning that you will give them the courage to step out on faith and do what you would have them to do. Father, bless us now as we continue in worship with our invitation song. We use it for your honor and your glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If God has spoken to you this morning that you feel you need to come, whatever the reason might be, won't you do so? Won't you do so? As we stand and say, I'm